Hello, I'm Robin Begley, CEO of the American Organization for Nursing Leadership and Senior Vice President of Workforce and Chief Nursing Officer of the American Hospital Association. Welcome to AONL's latest COVID-19 longitudinal study release. Thank you for taking the time to join us today to learn about the current primary challenges identified by nursing leadership. Before we get into the survey results, on behalf of the AONL board and team, American Hospital Association and health leaders, thank you for your tireless work, your dedication, and for all of the sacrifices you continue to make to care for patients and to protect our communities and for the health of our nation. I know the term healthcare hero sounds overused, but you truly are warriors in the seemingly never ending battle against COVID-19. My deepest thanks. Today, we are here to discuss the latest results of our three-part longitudinal COVID-19 insight study conducted in collaboration with Joslyn Marketing and made possible by the AONL Foundation. Joining me today, our AONL president, Marianne Fuchs, who is also the vice president of patient care and system chief nurse at Duke University Health System in Durham, North Carolina, and Daryl Joslin, principal and executive advisor for Joslin Marketing. Welcome, Marianne and Daryl. Thank you, Robin. I'm happy to be here. I also want to thank all the nurse leaders who took time to contribute to this year-long longitudinal study, especially the survey fielded last month in the midst of an overwhelming surge. Your insight is incredibly helpful and critical to helping nursing in the healthcare field forge a path forward. The results of this latest survey validate what you are feeling. Please know that you are not alone. Thank you, Marianne. And Daryl, on the national level, we have heard about the struggles that healthcare leaders, hospitals, healthcare systems, and health organizations are facing during the Delta surge. Can you talk about the biggest challenges nurse leaders identified that they didn't face six months ago? And how have these challenges changed since the February survey? Most certainly. When healthcare leaders were asked about their top three challenges Emotional health and well being was clearly the number one challenge, with 75% of respondents reporting it as such. It was followed by staffing issues, with over 60% selecting surge staffing, training, and reallocation, and then another 46% selecting staff retention, furloughs, and layoffs as their top challenges. In the last two surveys, we ask a question about the biggest new challenge they faced that they didn't face six to eight months ago. This was really intended to better understand the, their issues real time. Six months ago, low morale and burnout was not surprisingly the primary new concern with around 35% of the responses. While burnout remains a present issue, Staffing shortage has surpassed it as the biggest new challenge, having increased by an incredible 137% over the last six months. With all of these challenges, we also wanted to quantify the intent to leave for nursing. We found that close to 20% of nurse leaders say that they may or will be leaving nursing as a result of the pandemic. The role of the highest concern are nurse managers where one out of four reported that they, that they are considering leaving nursing as well. Daryl, that certainly uh, is a challenge. And boy, uh, that data is really, really scary. Um, we are seeing that turnover is growing nationally. Many more nurses who at this point in time can actually retire are choosing to retire or they're taking leave of absences or we see people moving to non-clinical facing roles. This is some of the impact that COVID is having on the health and well-being of our team members. And while um, we are uh, seeing new graduates come out of our organization, come out of schools, 
um, we are definitely seeing that they're even a little bit more challenged because their last year of clinical has often been through simulation and not in the clinical environment. And so that's providing for more challenge around staffing. Staffing in, is clearly beginning uh, to, not beginning, is uh, much more of a challenge. Many of our nurses, in addition, are leaving our organizations because the incentives to travel uh, and to become a traveler are so high as uh, rates of pay has greatly increased for those traveling. And this is now also putting even more of a financial uh, strain on organizations as they continue to try to staff. Very concerning information contained in the survey. I'd like to dive a little more into the burnout issue. Nurse leaders identified low morale and burnout in the February study as the biggest issue they did not face six months ago. Daryl, can you explain what is different now than six months ago survey? Certainly. Well, probably the most critical data point uh, is the emotional health of our nurse leaders. Um, totally agree, Robin. We had hoped to see this, that the score would plateau since assessing emotional health in February but it has continued to worsen. Today, 25% of nurse leaders report being not emotionally healthy. Nurse managers are of even more concern with more than one out of three reporting that they are not or not at all emotionally healthy. Since our first survey in July, 2020, we have also gauged the support nurse leaders have received from various entities. The perception of support from both local community and especially the state governments has declined considerably since February. The upside is that throughout the pandemic, all three surveys show that the nurse leaders feel they have the continued support of their teams and their organizations. And notably, since July of 2020, so going back an entire year, support from the federal government has shown continued improvement. So the data really tells a somber story. As we previously noted, it validates a lot of what we've been hearing in the media, but also among our healthcare teams. It is particularly concerning that our nurse leaders are having such challenge emotionally as they are the leaders who are leading the rest of our staff through very, very, very challenging times. So what we do in order to support them becomes even more important. And while the survey was directed at our nurse leaders, it's a larger workforce issue um, of concern for all of our healthcare areas. So Daryl, uh, looking to ahead, do, uh, do nurse leaders feel their organization will continue or experience a nursing shortage? Certainly, Mary Ann. In our last two surveys, we asked specific questions of nurse leaders on the perception of staffing shortages. Close to 90% of nursing leaders said that a staffing shortage would likely or very likely occur. Of even greater significance is that 60% said that it was very likely. When we compare this to data from their survey in February, those who indicated that a staffing shortage was very likely after the pandemic literally tripled. The increase in those that said likely or extremely likely was 58%. That is a tremendous shift in, in sentiment over a very, very short span of time. The good news is that nurse leaders report that they are addressing nurse, nursing shortage in a variety of ways. Not surprisingly, 70%, 6% are using financial incentives. More than half have considered adding or increasing float pools, 43% are considering offering flex scheduling and 43% are partnering, partnering or considering partnering cl more closely with their nursing schools. With the shortage, many are also looking to increase the overall workforce by adding LPNs, CNAs, and or um, PCAs. It's important to note that there's a significant number that said that they are also focused on shoring up support services across their health systems, like housekeeping, dietitians, and transport. Well, the pandemic has certainly caused some challenges uh, for us as it relates to staffing. And, and I do believe shortage will continue. We have seen some great creative and innovative models of 
care delivery that are coming forward. Uh, and never is there a better time now than to really engage all of our team members to their education and training uh, to be able to deliver uh, care at the highest level uh, of the work that they do every single day. So that is a great opportunity for us. Like you've described, um, Daryl, uh, indeed, staffing incentives, flexible scheduling, uh, extra compensation all do really help during these times, but that incredible teamwork uh, will become even more of a focus for us in using roles that perhaps we haven't used to their fullest in the past. Indeed, many organizations also are doing things like redeploying staff um, from non-clinical areas, um, a clinical staff that may be working in non-clinical areas in order to help during this time uh, in addition. And that whole piece around partnership of, with schools of nursing becomes even even more important as our schools still have challenges uh, with enrollment due to, to the, due to the shortage of nursing faculty. I think we've got a lot of work ahead of us, uh, but I know we have a lot of uh, creative nurse leaders out there that will help us uh, through this time. Yes, some of the work that AONL has done during the pandemic is to collect some exemplars of the teamwork that has been exhibited throughout the country and some very interesting interprofessional models. Um, you know, are being considered and studied. Another opportunity, you know, as we look at our retiring nurses, some of our healthcare organizations are considering how they can use them in their last several months or perhaps their last year of employment before they begin their re well re uh, deserved re retirement. And how can they, you know, help onboard the new nurses? Um, that are graduating and becoming part of the workforce. So lots of creative ways, um, including identifying a strategic plan for workforce, not just nursing, but certainly uh, nursing is one of the most important pieces of that plan as we move forward. So as Marianne and Daryl both said, lots of opportunities for us. And, and uh, you know, we have lots of information from you, which will really help us in this work. So I'd like to thank both Marianne and Daryl for joining me today to discuss the findings of AONL's Nursing Leadership COVID-19 Longitudinal Study. The full study and executive summary are available now on AONL.org. I highly encourage you to review it as we only scratch the surface today. To our nurse leaders, thank you for your leadership during this incredibly difficult time. AONL is working with the larger nursing and healthcare communities policymakers and industry partners to address the challenges you have identified. Thank you for sharing your insights. Stay safe and stay healthy.